In this world, is the destiny of mankind controlled by some transcendental entity or law? Is it like the hand of God hovering above? At least it is true that man has no control, even over his own will. No! The egg of the king! That cannot be! <laughs> I see. I've seen this double-edged ploy before. Leave him alone. You almost got him killed. It's because of you! Have you heard about the trouble with the Hawks? I have. That they suffered serious losses during a recent battle. You know, the soldiers say they encountered some kind of huge demon in the Tudor Castle. A huge demon? I declare it to be a falsehood, designed to draw attention away from their failure. It's no better than a child's trick. However, Griffith ultimately succeeded in securing the castle's surrender. We may not accuse them of failure. Yet they did suffer serious losses. Besides, it is rumored that Griffith will be raised to the peerage. I've heard that as well. It is true indeed. His reputation with the king has continued to rise due to all of his recent achievements. Outrageous! Why should the king give such a title to that mercenary? Hmm? Mm -hmm. Who is that? The commander of the Hawks Raiders. You've had a terrible experience in battle, haven't you? I heard that you encountered a demon on the battlefield. I wonder if the demon injured you. <laughs> Perhaps in the dark you saw a dog and thought it was a monster in the heat of battle. <laughs> <laughs> Most likely. <laughs> Why, you... Sorry. I'm a little off balance lately. Damn you, cur! My blade hungers for your blood! That mongrel... What's going on? You're all up here, I see. Are you well enough to walk? I'm fine. It's because of you! Just forget about it. No one blames you. 
Casca just said that because she was frantic at the time. You know how she is. So, what are you all doing here today? <laughs> well, we wanted to visit Griffith. We're not allowed. There are visitors here already. Ministers, bishops, and other sundry big shots in the royal court have come to pay their respects. The world is as kind as it is cruel, so to speak. Some of the senior statesmen despise Griffith and regard him as some upstart mercenary commoner, while others try to gain his favor to secure their future in the court. I get it. Maybe we've just been taking it for granted, but Griffith has at least so far been invincible. Basically, he is the leader of the strongest unit in Midland's army. Mm. That's it. Huh? Wh where are you going? Uh, wait, wait a minute! Wait! You weren't listening, were you? Yes, I was. So what? So what? Don't give me that! I'm telling you to wait here until Griffith finishes receiving his visitors. I don't give a damn about protocol. I'm going in to see my friend. Gods? You wait here. It's far enough. You'll have to wait till the meeting is over. <laughs> All right, hold it. Go. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> Pardon me. Oh, no. <laughs> what an asshole. Hey, Rickett. Wanna pay Griffith a visit? <laughs> Suit yourself. Hey, Griffith! Come on now. Haven't you had enough? <laughs> what the hell's your problem? Why? Why does it always have to come down to this? And in spite of it all, why does Griffith value you so much? <clears throat> Wait! Guts! Well, that killed the mood. I guess I'll come back later. You know, I think I understand how Guts is feeling. After all, Griffith has been unapproachable lately. It's like, it's like he's a stranger. should have left you to die out there! You don't care at all about your men! You're nothing but a mad dog! <laughs> Why? Why does it always have to come down to this? <laughs> it's because of you! It's because of you! <laughs> You're certainly on edge. Griffith! You seem quite able, though you were beaten much more soundly than I. I swear, you are a tough one, Guts. I apologize about yesterday. I heard you all came to visit me. Those ministers. They visit me every single day, taking advantage of my weakened state. It's quite tedious, really. I wish just once I could send them away. Nosferatu, Zad. To think that such an enormous monster really exists. 
I have a feeling that it wasn't quite as bad as my nightmares. But on the other hand, it is evident that there exist great beings beyond human knowledge. I would say that it could be something like... a god. More like... a demon. Who knows? Is there a difference? By the way, how did the fight end? Forgive me for not remaining conscious to help. It was because of that thing around your neck. If you think this man your friend, then know this. When you regard one another as brother, and this man's ambition crumbles, it is your destiny to face your death. You cannot escape your fate! Zod certainly recognized that thing. The Baylet seems to protect me from evil. I must thank that old fortune teller woman. I think I owe you my life again. Tell me. Three years ago, you said that you didn't want to lose an outstanding soldier. I am just a soldier serving you. But you are about to lose your life for me. A soldier. One of hundreds. It's not the kind of thing that happens to a level-headed man like you. So why? Oh, that. I thought we'd ended this discussion. And three years ago at that. There's no reason in particular. Do you really need one? Will you always be left doubting me, when I lay down my life for you? No. It's just... Oh, Sir Whitehawk. You seem to have gotten better. Your Majesty. Hey, gods. Kneel! How dare you! Show respect for your king! Never mind that. Raise your heads. I'm just out getting fresh air. But your Majesty... Everybody within the castle has grown excited because of the constant skirmishes and war councils. Alas, we do not have time to regain our composure. Allow me to introduce to you my younger brother, the Earl of Urius. He is the General of the White Dragon and next in line to the throne. I am Griffith. It is an honor to meet you. Hmm. My Lord Griffith. I am always proud when you so capably lead the Hawks to victory. That is kind, Your Majesty. You know I wasn't always an old man. Seeing your dauntless courage in battle even makes me burn for a fight. It reminds me of my youth, when I fought alongside my subjects in the war. Majesty, you should not talk to a mere unit commander. It isn't done. I do not mind talking with him. The truth be told, some of the senior statesmen in the royal court are rather displeased by your presence. They are concerned that your common birth might affect the prestige of the Midland Army. However, neither prestige nor status brings us triumph on the battlefield, much less welfare for my people. We live in a turbulent age. I am, hence, greatly depending upon exceptional people like yourself, rather than the generals who belong to the aristocratic class and are tied up in old traditions. Once again, I am very much obliged, Your Majesty. Who is that lady over there? Hmm? 
Oh, my daughter Charlotte. She is very shy. According to her, she is frightened of haughty warriors, so she rarely comes out of the palace. Charlotte, come over here. She is a very private person. Because she is my only daughter, I fear I've spoiled her. Please forgive her, Lord Griffith. Come along now, Charlotte. Pardon me, Lady Charlotte. You bastard! Such impudence! Laying hands on the princess! Ah! Hey, old man! Pardon my ill manners, Your Excellency Urius. What's keeping you? It's nothing, father. Shall we leave now, my lady? be left doubting me when I lay down my life for you? He said for you. I don't know if this is the answer I've been looking for all my life. But for now, I swear my life and my sword to him. Do you understand how important this stronghold is? No, no, sir! Imbeciles! You should know your history! Now you listen. As a result of Doldry's capture, we could, for the first time, successfully split the enemy lines. And this stronghold was built as our army's staging point for attacks against Midland. Behold this road. This road once functioned as the most important pass for military troops between Doldry and the Kingdom's territory. However, since our military forces seized this bridge, the tide of the war was turned. They were forced to expose the heart of Midland directly before our military forces. According to the secret tactics handed down through the Korbowitz family for 300 years, capture a road and capture the victory! <laughs> well, uh, shouldn't we strengthen our defenses? Huh? Uh -huh. Pa! Of course we strengthen our defense! Look here! If the enemy attacks us, they have to march over this bridge. Therefore, that's where the best soldiers from the garrison will amass! It's a narrow stone bridge, so only one mounted soldier or two can charge at a time. Moreover, Tudor's finest archers will be maintaining their defensive position above the exterior gate. Our archers will easily cut down the leaders of the enemy as they march in one by one. This is perfect. We'll deliver a severe blow against the enemy while escaping any damage ourselves. My scheme is fantastic. Excuse me, sir, but...
but what if the enemy doesn't use this bridge and attacks from our flanks? <laughs> you need not worry. There's no bridge or ford along the river running within eight miles, and the river is wide and deep enough that not even the best horse could cross. <clears throat> but, um, pardon me, sir, what if the enemy makes a raft? <laughs> As you see, we are in a barren land of rocks and vineyards. It is impossible to make a raft because of the lack of trees. Even if the enemy makes a raft, they cannot send many of their troops over at once. Or will they make a raft out of the grapevines? <laughs> Why do we have to sortie the moment Griffith feels better? We're the only ones they can count on in battle. I don't know if you care. But even the heavy-equipped Golem Knights failed to capture that castle. Yeah, I heard they were severely damaged. It gets worse. Reportedly, two-thirds of the Knights were defeated on the bridge. What? Don't say that. Now it's our turn. We shall dispose of them. Looking back, the morning comes to find your face in your grass. To any side you're shouting What is that? It's just the same What is trying your crown? I'm spreading my grass Walking back so when my grass you fading Every man sacrifices himself for his ambitions, especially when he possesses a young heart. He is unable to suppress his burning ambition to gain glories and to lose dreams. Those are the fates one can scarcely avoid. You are 